my name is Sayed Mohsen Shahan Dajti, so I want to announce so just Mohsen. Um, and today I'm presenting a paper reviewing different applications of data fusion uh, for uh, construction engineering. These applications are implemented, designed and implemented by a group of researchers at uh, Carnegie, different researchers at uh, Carnegie Mellon University, Georgia Institute of Technology, University of Texas at Austin, and University of Colorado. First, uh, I will introduce data fusion for those of you who are not probably familiar with that. And then I go over the application, some of the applications of data fusion. And at the end, I will conclude uh, with uh, mentioning some of the challenges for bridging the gap between academia and uh, practice. Data fusion, what is data fusion? Data fusion is really a process, a process of combining data and information uh, in order to uh, estimate or predict the state of an entity. Data fusion is a multidisciplinary field uh, which is leveraging uh, the different various research areas uh, such as uh, signal processing, information theory, statistical estimation, in and inference, and artificial intelligence. Uh, data fusion uh, basically uh, then provides some potential advantages such as enhancing confidence and enhancing reliability of measurements, improving detection by extending spatial and temporal coverage, reducing data ambiguity, and improving accuracy. Um, the first application that I will talk about is uh, the methodology for automatic identification and localization of engineering components by all the cases of the University of Texas uh, here I go over some of the, um, the data components used to call us. Basically, there are positioning and identification uh, technologies. And what he does is he combines the positioning and identification technologies uh, for estimating the location of the materials. Um, in the other application, related application, uh, Reza Ian has um, uh, developed a data fusion model for on-site materials trapping in construction. There are thousands of uh, components in the construction site. Uh, statistics show that uh, around 10% of materials cannot be found uh, when they are needed. And up to probably 80% of that, probably 80% uh, of the time can be based on So, uh, these motivations along with some other challenges like long storage periods, uh, materials movement, employment weather, motivated resident has to um, design the site materials tracking system. They use GPS identification, uh, RFID technology, and uh, build, uh, a build kit that can be put in pockets uh, in this sport. This slide shows this a scenario motivating scenario for that. Um, so, um, 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 RFID reader and GPS can be moved around the site with individuals who are uh, walking around or who are driving and uh, these uh, RFID readers can read uh, the, uh, the tags of the components and the GPS locks the positions. And based on them, some techniques like tri triangulation uh, the location of materials can be estimated. Uh, technologies are not perfect. Uh, there are always uncertainties and precision uh, about technologies, uh, even uh, the most expensive ones. So uh, there are some uh, reasons behind these uncertainties and precisions. Um, Multi-pass interference, environmental related interference, uh, dead space, antenna characteristics and high, highly ill-formed instances of RFID tag signal strength are among the uh, reasons behind that. And they were the reasons that uh, the president has tried to uh, build the model, the fusion model, to reduce probably the uncertainty, to reduce these uncertainties. Um, basically, um, they uh, use data fusion along with contextual information and sensing technologies uh, to improve the construction site materials management. And it is the model that they developed. They developed it based on uh, the revised JDL model um, for um, um, construction with 
source location estimation. Um, they have validated their uh, research and for, for a real case, relatively large one, a uh, large experiment with over 400 tags and materials. In the other application, I will talk about, uh, I don't know why he's happening in this. Should be fine doing it. Pfizer and Bella uh, work for understanding the job site activity. Uh, uh, it is the goal of their research. So what they did is in terms of, uh, what has motivated them to do that is in terms of safety, we know that 25% uh, right now, the whole fatality is related to the proximity of workers uh, to equipment. In terms of uh, productivity, uh, we know that monitoring and control can be labor intensive, subjective, isolated, and so the goal of this research by Tazer Bell is understanding job site activities in forklifts, cost effectively and reliably. They use these technologies uh, for, um, um, for, for for developing the model. Uh, they use ultra wide band global positioning system, uh, robotic total station, and video cameras. It is a test environment. You can see the sensors and, and uh, the calibration area. Points, diffusion, um, these are the results. Um, the left uh, graph shows the results, the uh, graph from individual sensors, and uh, the date is shown spatially, referenced and mapped views data sets to activities. Um, in the other application, I'll talk about visual data diffusion for object recognition and construction, in construction by Relocus and Jim. Um, they um, developed a model that has two layers. In a preliminary layer, the data diffusion is done for a single image. So color fixtures, materials information, such as color fixtures, texture features, texture features are extracted from a single image and <coughs> uh, objects are uh, looked. In, a, uh, the, in the other level, uh, it uses, the data view uses multiple images, multiple frames for 3D object recognition. This is the graph which is showing is show the materials information retrieval. Um, so basically you can see that we have a graph and the data shape information and material signature is extracted from the graph. Material signature is compared to the knowledge base which is built and then the result of this comparison is combined with shaped information uh, to recognize objects such as columns. You can see that uh, this approach can be used for uh, object recognition for recognizing a um, column or it can be used even for recognizing patterns. Uh, Cobus um, proposed and implemented uh, a video uh, interpretation methodology for rapid productivity analysis. He has four layers in uh, his model. Uh, in the lower level, we have the video data, which is transferred to object layer, positions, trajectory, motion, and then that is transferred to semantic level using the model-based reasoning, the states, events, and scenarios are extracted, and then they are changed, they are transferred to productivity information, time utilization, workflow, and abnormal production scenarios. Um, this is showing the interface uh, of the implementation uh, of this model uh, that they had. You, know, you can see the workflows and the construction side in this implementation. <coughs> Data fusion can be used for continual uh, construction productivity assessment too. Um, so construction productivity varies highly and deviates from the estimated model. Based on case studies, we observed that several cases. Uh, productivity measurements, as well as contextual information, needs to be continuously, continually collected, streamed, used, and reasoned in order to support the assessment of construction uh, productivity. However, data capture technologies have different communication and processing requirements. Um, the laser scanner, camera, and GPS, for instance, uh, the data uh, that they generate, the amount of data, and the processing requirements 
turn up are different. Um, actually, IBM uh, have developed a system called the Imposphere String. The Imposphere String is a large scale string processing middle. Um, at Carnegie Mellon, we are using this uh, IBM middleware to integrate different sensing technologies to the data from different sensing technologies. The focus of uh, this system is real-time analytic processing. So, uh, and it is able, it enables real-time fusion, integration, and analysis of large amounts of data, near, real large amounts of data. Um, and it provides the capability of processing and analyzing the structured and unstructured data. Although it is a great tool, uh, we still need to develop appropriate domain-specific uh, fusion plans for merging different data sources and big data capture technology. And these are some of the challenges that we have for uh, integrating um, different data sources. Um, we have, as a total structured and unstructured data, we have generated data sources, projects, Sometimes they're globally referenced, they're locally referenced. Um, they are object-oriented or relational um, data sources. And these um, uh, motivated us to plan, to design different learning plans um, at Carnegie Mellon to um, combine these data. Sensor Ant. Uh, actually, uh, Sensor Andrew is a field uh, developed by a group of researchers at Carnegie Mellon University. Sensor Andrew is a combination of uh, hardware and software elements uh, for, uh, <coughs> and to form a virtual instrument for sensing and actuation. Uh, so what uh, Sensor Andrew, what is the motivation behind Sensor Andrew? One of the motivation is we have a, lot of, a large number of sensors deployed already in the building. And there are a lot of um, users that they need it. So um, these, um, this system provides um, access uh, for users and applications uh, for that sensors. So it connects uh, these need. It, it provides uh, uh, these connections. Um, sensor Andrew is uh, basically has different layers. Um, but in the middle of the layer, it uses XMPP server. So sensors uh, publish data through a gateway <coughs> and a network on the XMPP server. And that data can be used by users and uh, app, uh, applications. Um, it not, not, only, it uh, not only provides uh, uh, the sensing capabilities, but also the actuation too. So, in the same thing, uh, scenario, sensors publish data on uh, given nodes which are um, available for different agents to be used. In the actuation case, um, actuator publish and subscribe data on event nodes, uh, and uh, the agents can uh, change the, those data and uh, provide actuation. So, uh, we talked about data fusion, which is a multidisciplinary research. We went over some of the applications, some of the applications of the fusion in construction and engineering, very And uh, basically, you can sell some of the advantages of using data fusion, like enhancing confidence, improving system reliability, reducing ambiguity, and the others. Uh, but there is a question uh, what are the challenges uh, that? Uh, what well, challenge is bridging the gap between academia and industry for using these applications uh, and the other potential applications? Um, first, different fusion levels are not well connected, fully understood, and they are not well integrated to conventional project management uh, systems. The import of mobilization and demobilization of technologies is understood. Um, and there is a need to distinct uh, between different viewpoints of data fusion in our industry. Um, there are some issues related to data itself, uh, the data uncertainty, conflicting data, uh, these should be considered too and should be handled. Uh, one of the important problems, the challenges, is reaction of workforce to intrusiveness of uh, sensors uh, and ethical uh, issues. Um, 
growing research volume in the area of data fusion probably lead to reinventing the bill. We should think about that and how we can avoid it. And the implementation of the technologies depends on the specs related to cost benefit analysis, technical feasibility, technology usage, and technology impact. These um, um, implementation aspects should also be 